and the rest of them on board. You know what I mean? Somebody Atlantic blessed him with a um with an imprint label deal, and he had his own crew. And you know, like all the other rappers, you know, like Buster Rhymes had the uh, flip mode, and you know, Nelly had the Saint Lunatics, Eminem with the D12, and you know, Fat Joe banged out with the Trevor Squad. He blessed the rappers with the name of you know the street crew Trevor Squad. I got you. I got you. You know, this this was all happening while you was incarcerated. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! Like I said, I I got sent up in what eighty eight. Joe's first album came out in what ninety two, I think it was, and Pun dropped in what ninety eight. So yeah, I was already knee deep into the bid, man. Your boy's a DOC baby, man. I was practically raised in the Department of Corrections. Right, you know, you know Rikers Island. We hear a lot of stories about Rikers Island and Rikers know, Island is serious. Rikers Island yeah. was serious, my man. You know what I mean? Like your gun had to keep going off. You know what I mean? Rikers Island was an adventure. You know, dudes tested your gangster every day. If you showed the ounce of weakness, the wolves was coming at you. So, you know, you had to have zero tolerance. And your boy C Rock was running the cell blocks. I would walk into the cell block, snatch the phone, because back then the phones was free. So, you know, 90% of the drama was over, over the phone. Whoever ran the phone ran the house. So I would always go straight for the phone. You know, sometimes they'll go for it. You know, sometimes I'll go banger to banger with a dude and get him for his slot time. Sometimes the whole house would rush me. You know what I mean? And run me out the house. Like, you know, there was all types of shit going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm Rikers, not... Rikers Island, Rikers Island was definitely, I mean, I got rips on my face. What is that? This side of the face? You know, I got all type of scars from Rikers Island. You know what I mean? No, no doubt, no doubt. And um, can you? I don't know if the people heard this story before, but um, you was telling me how, you know, you had ran into Tupac and Clinton. Can you tell okay. us? Okay, of course. You know what I mean? Uh, I was in Clinton when Pac had blue trial. I believe he had the what one or three or whatever. So I get the kite from Joe. Bad Joe sent me a kite like, "Yo, Charlie, this nigga's there with you. Ah, I, I, I need you to hold him down." You know what I mean? At the time, Fat Joe was my brother, you know what I mean? And whatever he was asking me to do, I wasn't even thinking about it, you know? That was my brother. So I stepped to Pac in the yard, and I was holding him down, you know, not long, because he wasn't in population too long, you know what I mean? They put him in a, what they call APPU or something real quick, being that he was a celebrity and all that. But for the few months that he was in Pop Dog, I had to back the wolves up on him, and Pac had a lot of beef. Pac had a lot of beef because, first of all, we're talking about Clinton. Mm -hmm. Clinton is a max. It's not a minimum. It's not a medium. It's a max. And I'm saying that to say the average dude in there got 20 years and better. You know, so everybody's dangerous in there. You know yeah. what I mean? Again, you're not in a minimum. You're not in a medium. You know, the average dude in there is doing a life bid. He's hide, He's dying behind these walls. And, you know, the mindset is crazy, my man. For those that never been locked up, I salute you. You know that you never been there and you ain't had to go through the experience. But for those that know, no. You know what I mean? For those that know, no. Like, the mindset of you being in the yard and, you know, and you dealing with dudes on a daily basis that, um, and you dealing with dudes on a daily basis that got life, you know, you got to know how to walk around these dudes. Like, you know, prison politics. You know what I mean? You got to know the do's, the don'ts. You know, like these dudes is never coming home. So if you get into drama with one of these dudes, you got to take them out. Now, the bad thing is like a person like me, I was only doing a 10 to 20. <laughs> they, was, they used to call me a tourist. <laughs> they used to call me a tourist. They was like, Charlie Rock, you just passing through, my man. You a tourist. We here for life. You know what I mean? But your boy was, you know, I was, ho I was more than holding my own down. I was trapping in the yard. You know what I mean? I was involved in all types of BS. And again, it's not everybody that was moving like I was moving. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I was the baddest and all that, but nigga, dudes knew mine was going on. You know what I mean? If you mess with me or you cross me, we definitely had a problem. And what, what made you, you know what I'm saying, to protect Tupac? Like, you know, what made you do it? I'm telling you, I got the kite from Fat Joe. 
Fat Joe, remember, I'm still down with Joe at this time. Joe used to come see me. Fat Joe would shout me out on mad albums. You know what I mean? He used to bring the rappers up to see me, pun, and all of them and whatnot. So I'm still in contact with Joe. So Joe sent me the kite. Like, yo, Charlie, I need you to hold this dude down. And a lot of dudes wanted to get at Pac. Like, Pac had a serious problem. One was because he was a trophy. What's a trophy? A trophy is a dude with status. You know, somebody that's famous like him. A Mm -hmm. trophy can also be somebody that got the ill reputation. That's a known gangster. You know, because in prison, it's all about your rep. It's all about your rep. When you're doing 100 years, the only thing you care about is your rep. You want dudes to know that you that dude don't mess with you. You know what I mean? And, you know, it is what it is. You know, again, my people that never been there, I'm glad you never been there. But for the homies that been there, they know what I'm talking about. So, again, they wanted to get out. Just think about it. You want to be known as the dude that banged out Tupac. Why not? Your reputation is official. You'll be known as the dude that banged out Tupac. And, you know, I mean, but, you know, I know some people might find this hard to believe, but dudes want that reputation. Why not? You know, the same situation with um, with Larry Davis and Blue Boy. I don't know if you're familiar with Larry Davis and Blue Boy. Larry Davis was a known dude, the dude that shot the six cops, whatever, and all that. So the homie Blue Boy m- allegedly murdered Larry Davis in the yard for the rap. Same thing with Pac. You know, you want to be known as a dude that either smacked him up or took his commissary or whatever. You know, it's prison. Dudes do all type of stupid shit like that. You know what I mean? A second, a second issue, a second reason why Pac was was on fire was because he had the rape case. And I don't care if you on Rikers Island, if you in St. Quentin, if you in Alcatraz. My man, if you come through with a rape beef, if you, if 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 your if your jacket says rape or child molester or any heinous shit, you got problems. You got problems. Like I don't think you have to have been in prison to know that if you come through with a rape charge or you know do some heinous to a kid or whatever, dudes just getting at you. Me personally, done banged out a few dudes just on I don't know them just on the strength that they had that on their jacket. We don't want them dudes in population. You can't live. You know, the first thing you think is like, yo, that could have been my son or my little niece. Or, you know, that's the mindset. You know, that's the mindset of the convict or the inmate. You know what I mean? That's how it be. We don't want them niggas around us. So, yeah, so he was a trophy and he had the rap beat. So I I actually lost like two of my doges getting at dudes to back him up off Pac. And again, I want to reinstate, um, I think it was Hussein. Or one of the dudes from the outlaws that uh that was down with Pac, he did an interview, and and you know and and he verified this. He was like, yeah, Pac told me Fat Joe's people stepped to him and they was holding him down. That Joe has sent dudes to catch. Like this is out there, you know. Y'all can look it up. No, for sure. Yeah. Appreciate that. And um, like far as like Terror Squad, so now. You know, you do got the rappers just coming along. Like, you got Big Pun and Cuban Link. Like, what was your relationship with Cuban Link? I mean, we was all right. I mean, I mean, remember, I went in 88, and I came home in 02. So by the time I came home, Pun, rest in peace, already had passed. You know, there was a fallout between the squad and everything and all that, you know? So... <clears throat> As far as my relation with them, I would meet him on the visit because Joe would always bring his rappers up to see me. So, you know, I met Pun, Link, and, you know, and all, the, and all of them on the VI. I got Matt Flix with them on the VI. Did uh, Cuban Link... Did, did Cuban Link ever put you in a song? On a what? Did Cuban Link ever put you in a song? In a song? Nah, 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 nah. Now, okay, pun. But, I mean, besides Joe, pun was the only one that shouted me out on Capital Punishment. I got you. And uh, well, what was your relationship with uh, Big Pun? How did you meet him? I mean, we was cool. Again, remember, you know, I mean, I was locked up. By the time mm-hmm. I came home, the homie had passed. But I would call him on the phone. You know, they'll come up every now and then to see me on the VI. 
So that's basically the relationship. But as far as hanging out with them and knowing them on a personal level, nah, nah. We, we didn't have that type of relationship. I got you. I got you. So you come home and uh, was you, did you think about rapping like when you first come home or when you got home, you, you was like, you know what, I can rap and put you in the studio. Like, how did that come about? Well, when I came home, I ain't going to front. Before I came home, I had wrote some songs down. I was dipping and dabbing, whatever. But when I first 